Ugh, I wish we were still on spring break. Yeah, I know, but hey, less than two months left of school. It's still such a long time. Why are you complaining? You're a senior. You get off early. Oh, that's right. Today is Friday, April 5th. I'm Brie Buckner. And I'm Dominique Dawson. And, and Wave, Wave TV, TV starts, starts now. now. Did the Easter Bunny get you anything this year? Not much, but he did give me Twix. That one's my favorite. Ew, what? How is that your favorite candy? Jolly Ranchers clears easily. You know what, whatever. Here's Gavin Young to tell us which candy is really the best. Welcome to Yay or Nay, Somerville Edition, where we'll be discussing which candies are good or bad, whether you leave them on the shelves or put them in your cart. I'm here with... Gavin Young. And this is Wave TV. So first up, we have... Hershey's Almonds Edition. So these are different from normal Hershey's as they contain almonds. We're gonna go ahead and try them. That is gonna be a nay for me. I'm not a big fan of almonds, and inside of a basic chocolate is not good. Nay, leave this on the shelves. I think they're okay, but I'm still gonna give it a nay. Not my favorite. Here we go. Let's give it a try. It's too basic tasting. It's a Milky Way with the wafer inside of it. Big deal. This is one of the greatest candies on the planet right here. Third on our list, we have Kit Kats. That was not a really good crack. Yeah, no, it really wasn't. Y'all ever eat your Kit Kats just like you take a bite out of the whole thing? Like he did? Big Kit Kat guy. No. Yay. I'm a big fan of Skittles. Uh, they're pretty good. I like the variety of flavors. What he said. Yay. That's all we have for today's episode. I'm Mason Faircloth. And I'm Gavin Young. Once again, reporting for Wave TV. Good news for any local athletes. The Oak Brook YMCA complex is being revamped. Haley Holden gives us an overview of what's to come. If you have been to the Oakbrook YMCA, you know for a fact that it needs a lot of TLC. So Dorchester County and the Somerville YMCA have partnered up to develop the state-of-the-art sports complex in the lovely Oakbrook area. This amazing new sports complex will include state-of-the-art turf sports and courts, lots of spaces for events, a concession building with a restroom, a playground for the kids, and access to the very scenic Sawmill Branch Trail. Thanks to the Somerville's YMCA's leadership, the sports complex will also offer year-round programs and activities for all interest. This redevelopment of the Oakbrook YMCA have investments up to $12 million, all from Dorchester County, and a contribution of 17 acres from the YMCA. Construction will begin late summer. Reporting for Wave TV, I'm Haley Holden. The new building should have a boxing ring. You box? Yeah, I'm training to fight Mike Tyson. What? The world champion? Why not? Jake Paul's doing it. If he can fight Mike Tyson, I can fight Mike Tyson. Um, what? <laughs> Mason Faircloth tells us more. One. We're in the hallways of Somerville High School asking people who's going to win the fight between Jake Paul and Mike Tyson, which will be taking place in July. We're going to ask people what they think, who they think will win, how many rounds, and how much it would take them to take a punch from their winner. And who do you think is going to win between Mike Tyson and Jake Paul? Iron Mike Tyson, baby. I'm going to go Jake Paul. Mike Tyson, bro. Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson. Yeah, Tyson. Jake Paul just because Mike Tyson hit oh, Mike Tyson. Uh, well, Tyson's going to think he can, you know, beat him, but he won't. I feel like he can definitely beat Mike Tyson, not going to lie. All right, how many rounds is it going to go to? One. Mike Tyson, go ahead. Two rounds. One punch, you know what I mean? As long as I can glaze. Now that we're talking about Jake Paul and stuff, right? He's on my hit list. He's on your hit list? You got offs with Jake Paul. <laughs> All right, now how much would it take you to take a punch from Mike Tyson when he was in his prime? Um, I mean, I'm going to take the money, but I'm going to eat the hit. No, Cap. Cap. A mil, but I'm Cap. eating the hit, though. Cap. A meal? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm eating a hit on my baby. Yeah, yeah I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm not. How much? What? Talk about how much money? Yeah. 
I don't, I don't know about that, man. Uh, it would take a lot of money. A lot of money. Yeah, I'm not taking that. Mm -mm. Like a billion? 50 million? 50 million. I gotta be alive, man, to enjoy the money. I'll do it for free. No, Cap. Yeah. I'd pay for it. Yeah. yeah. Like $2, to be honest. Cap. Yes. Mm, probably $0. Yeah. yeah, I want I want Mike Tyson to touch me. Uh, no, I didn't well, say all that, yeah. but you know, it's the yeah, experience it's like in life. That. The people think that the veteran, Mike Tyson, will be winning this fight taking place in July. Make sure to be there for that fight. Born for Wave TV, I'm Mason Faircloth. Sometimes I wonder what they're putting in our food. What is it even made of? That's a good question. I wonder if Solomon Malat ever thinks about these things. Thank goodness he's up next. I'm sure you all know of the jalapeno. Jalapeno! What? It's jalapeno. Oh. I'm sure you all know of the jalapeno. The American paragon of spiciness seen at Tex-Mex restaurants everywhere. Or, at least, they were. If you're a young lad or lassie, or something in between, who partakes in the occasional spicy goodness, then you may have noticed that global spicy culture, or spice culture, as the kids say. No, they don't. Shut up! You may have noticed that Global Spy Soldier has gradually moved away from the iconic Jalapa Papino and has instead moved towards hotter endeavors, like ghosts and murder chips. In fact, the global perception of the Jopa Polio has shifted so much, even I can eat them. I may be a beautiful brown boy, but my father is a white man. So anything spicier than a dash of salt makes my tongue go cuckoo crazy. But recently, they've become palatable, man. Why? <laughs> Capitalism. Now, I don't say that for a reaction or humor, I mean that as objectively as possible. It's capitalism. According to D Magazine, these funny peppers have gone through a sort of de-spicification. 80% of jalapenos grown are sent for different types of processing, with only the remaining 20% grown to be sold fresh. The heat of different jalapenos can be unpredictable, so salsa and hot sauce companies use mild jalapenos and add extra capsaicin, the chemical irritant plants have that makes them give your mouth that pleasant little tingle, to create predictably spicy products. Recently though, pepper exporters have stopped bothering with putting the extra capsaicin in the raw peppers they sell, meaning that you're only getting the true spice of the jalapeno, which is not that much. Conspiracizing for Wave TV, I'm Solomon Malat. The Little Shop of Horrors is coming to Somerville. That's right! Grab some tickets so you can see the show on the 11th, 12th, and the 13th. Here's Ava Grafton with some more information. It's springtime, the flowers are blooming, temperatures are rising, and you know what that means. The Somerville Theatre Department is back with another musical. This year, they are putting on the Broadway classic, Little Shop of Horrors. Set in the 1960s, the story follows Flora Seymour Krelborn, a young orphan living in the slums of Skid Row, whose entire life is turned upside down by a flesh-eating plant. The musical also revolves around the blossoming romance between Seymour and the female lead, Audrey. Though the show has been revived across hundreds of stages over the years, Somerville has put their own twist on it, adding extra characters and pantomimers to truly bring this show to life. The music, composed by Alan Mepton, contains elements from popular genres of the early 60s, like Motown, doo-wop, and rock and roll. The soundtrack consists of well-known tunes including Skid Row, Somewhere That's Green, and Suddenly Seymour. Somerville High School Theater has always felt, since the start of the year, it's felt like a home. I like on how like close-knit we all are. Um, like. Everybody knows each other's name, and like it's not really like a, oh, I don't know who you are. But through perseverance and teamwork, Somerville Theater has been able to put on an amazing production. The show runs from April 11th through the 13th at 7 p.m., right here in the Somerville High School Auditorium. Tickets will be $5 for students and $10 for general admission. DD2 faculty and staff get in for free. Make sure to come out and see this glittering performance and give your support to the SHS Backstage Booster Club. Reporting for Wave TV, I'm Ava Grafton. Did you see that video of the, the door on that plane? It flew off. Yeah, it was a Boeing plane, right? Yep, they're in big trouble. Yikes. Alex Freeman gives us more information. As we remember, a few months ago on January 5th, Alaskan's Boeing Airlines Flight 737 had an accident where the exit door flew off due to the bolts not being fitted correctly. This caused the company to face a criminal investigation 
and a report from the passengers on the plane. The company was faced with counts of conspiracy to defraud the United States. Boeing Company is said to be paying $243.6 million in fines, $7 million for the airline, and $500 million for the passengers and family. During the court case, Boeing Company denied liability for any damage alleged to the passengers. Many testimonies and lawsuits by passengers have been said the airline has denied correlation. Nearing the end of the case, a former employee, John Barnett, was found dead at his home due to a self-inflicted gunshot wound. The case itself could affect many people's jobs and family in the United States. Reporting for Wave TV, I'm Alex Freeman. That's it from us this week. Reporting for Wave TV, I'm Bray Buckner. And I'm Dominique Dawson. Have, Have a, a great, great weekend. weekend.